So unfortunately, my uh, looks like my clicker uh, doesn't really work. So I'm going to just stand here and start talking. Uh, I'm Chris Martin. I work uh, at Cisco. Um, I'm responsible for uh, uh, quite a few things, but at least for today, I'm responsible for talking to you about virtual managed services. And, and virtual managed services, uh, as you'll see, uh, particularly around the first set of use cases, which are related to uh, cloud uh, and, and VPN connectivity, are really designed to provide uh, both service providers uh, and enterprises the ability to offer to their customers or their partners a, uh, an automated and orchestrated virtualized service which means that you'll have some kind of virtual services that you bring on board, whether they're uh, network functions or uh, cloud services platform or software as a service as an example, uh, and then bring that together with networking, uh, whether it's some kind of overlay connectivity or a mix of overlay and underlay connectivity. The idea is to automate the marriage of cloud and VPN connectivity uh, in a virtual environment. So the first one that we built was something called Cloud VPN. And I'm going to show you a demonstration of this in a moment. But Cloud VPN uh, is, is really uh, uh, stated succinctly a platform for connecting uh, virtual network functions and remote CPE that's been onboarded uh, uh, through a dynamic and automated function or an automated method uh, in a way that allows an SP or, in, as you'll see, an enterprise who's doing this uh, in an extranet context to automate their operations to reduce the total cost of ownership to provide for uh, rapid service delivery, rapid onboarding of new uh, capabilities, uh, all in a virtual environment. And this is done through a variety of, uh, of key fo uh, 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 focus areas, particularly around SDN, virtualization, uh, and orchestration. The mission is very simple, uh, to, to uh, reduce costs and improve agility. And as you can see here, there's really four key aspects to this. When we think about the future of, of networking with cloud and virtualization, we think about uh, uh, really four pillars. One of them is orchestration. This is a key functionality that is needed today uh, to enable the rapid onboarding of new capabilities in the network, uh, both in the cloud and in the network function. And the reason for this is that, yes, we can you know, program networks, we can configure routers and devices. The bigger challenge is how do you do it in a way uh, that allows you to provision a service when a lot of those service elements don't exist at the time of ordering, at the time of provisioning. So if you think about a virtual environment where you have virtual machines or virtual functions, they don't exist until you activate them. If you have CPE that hasn't yet been shipped to the customer prem, let alone plugged in, activated, and, and brought online, they don't exist at the time of ordering or certainly at the time of provisioning. You have to do this dynamically, and we'll talk about how that works in, in a few slides. We need a network, of course, and this network nowadays is a different network than the, the network in the past. In many cases, it's an overlay network built over the internet or built over an IP network. We need virtualized resource pools that are easy to manage, adaptable, elastic, uh, and portable. And then we need uh, workload portability, as I just mentioned. So we need to be able to move things around based on the location, based on the cost, where things are best applied. Automati automation, virtualization, and orchestration combined together is what cloud services are. And you know, we know a lot about cloud from our experience you know, from a consumer perspective. We have, you know, everybody's got a phone. I have one at least. I hope everybody here has one. Most people have uh, access to some type of consumer-based cloud service. But it's a lot different when you think about it from a networking perspective. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, in Cloud VPN, we wanted to really simplify the user experience. I just mentioned, you know, I brought out my phone and I said, you know, this is our experience with the cloud. Almost everybody's first experience with the cloud, is, except maybe for the folks here who are involved in IT, everybody's first experience with the cloud is a consumer experience, like where you download your music or where you download your, 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 your media, your movies, where you even store your email. Like, I mean, if you had a personal email address, and I think most of us do, probably sometime in the early 2000s, maybe even in the late 90s, you got a publicly available email address through Yahoo or through Microsoft or something like this. That was cloud computing, right? This is the first experience you have with the cloud. Uh, now we're starting to look at how we could put networking in the cloud. Not just services, but networking itself. And the way to do that is to provide the same customer experience that you provide uh, to your, you know, to, you know, from a consumer perspective. You should be able to order something from an app store. It should be model, uh, very uh, you know, self-service oriented. You should be able to go to a site and order networking the way you order uh, you know, music or the way you order a taxi or the way you, uh, you know, you know uh, buy a movie ticket through Fandango. And that's the idea. 
So the idea here is we'll order services. The CPE will ship to the customer prem uh, in this case. So I'm a customer, I order some services, I need some networking gear. It gets shipped to my, uh, my location automatically. I unbox it, power it up, and plug it in. At the same time, in the cloud, where all the networking functions are going to live, orchestration happens, and we start to activate service chains, we start to activate security functions in such a way that the entire process is auto automated. Now, from a service provider perspective, this is massively important because the cost of doing business for a service provider is largely driven around operational costs. I mean, of course, they make big capital expenditure uh, investments, which are important, but the big cost is the, is, is the operational cost. And if you think about, uh, for example, a small, medium business, you know, the, the monthly recurring revenue and the return on investment expectation are very, very tightly coupled. I need to get a, a return on investment in maybe eight months, and if I have to you know, uh, entertain a couple of uh, support phone calls to bring on a service or to activate a network function, that elongates that return on investment beyond that eight months. Now I'm getting to 12, 14, 16 months. That service is no longer profitable. The only way to make it profitable while also making it high value is to automate is to drive these functions without having anybody involved. And so this is what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to you know, offer a service, whether it's a service provider service or even an enterprise. And the demo I show you will actually be an enterprise service where an enterprise is providing a service to their customers or to their partners, more importantly, to allow for business-to-business -business connectivity to be brought online automated uh, without any, anybody uh, touching any keyboards. So we want to minimize computering keyboarding and all the other things that tend to take time, and especially uh, tend to cost money. <clears throat> Real uh, quickly, I wanted to show you what the architecture is for Cloud VPN today. Uh, and this is a service that we have deployed uh, at several customers around the world. What we have here is a service provider cloud as an example. Uh, and then we have CPE that is you know, at the customer prem. And in the cloud, we have a, a set of virtual functions that are part of a service chain sitting on top of some kind of virtual, uh, virtualization infrastructure manager, in this case, OpenStack. So we have you know, a virtual router, a firewall, a web security appliance, and an internet router. And the idea is to ship the CPE to the customer prem, attach to these virtual, this virtual router here over IPsec, and then route the traffic through the firewall, through the web security appliance, and onto the internet. This is a real service. The difference between this service and the traditional service is that the firewall function and the web security function would be at the customer prem. And if it's an enterprise service, in many cases, that's a physical appliance or a stack of physical appliance, uh, appliances, which all need to be maintained, which need to be operated. The idea from a service provider perspective when it comes to cloud and virtual CPE and network functions virtualization is to, is to pull a lot of the functionality into the data center and into the cloud to thereby improve operational efficiency and performance. This exact architecture can be used to build any type of networking connectivity between remote CPE and cloud services. So from an enterprise perspective, if I have a partnership ar arrangement, and by the way, Cisco has over 400 of these types of extranet partners that we maintain networking connectivity to. This is you know, ERP partners and manufacturing partners. Large businesses tend to have partnerships, and more and more, they're network driven. Every time we have to build one of these partnership arrangements across the world, it takes time and expense. So an enterprise can use this functionality to automate these types of connections as well. Service providers can use this functionality to automate connection to cloud providers. Cloud providers can use this type of technology to automate connections to other cloud providers. The idea is automation and simplification. Architecturally, from a stack up perspective, this is a very high level view, but the idea is centered around this technology here called the Network Services Orchestrator. NSO acts as a central brain of the system. It's a model-driven orchestration system that operates in a, a closed, uh, soft, real-time orchestration loop. And the idea there is to allow uh, provisioning actions, uh, create, update, delete actions, while also being able to allow for reprovisioning, redeploying of new services. Underneath the Network Services Orchestrator is the Elastic Services Controller. And this ESC component is responsible uh, for doing VM lifecycle management at the uh, Virtualization Infrastructure Manager layer. It also acts as an abstraction layer between the VIM layer, in this case like OpenStack, and the layers above. So what this means is that we can use something like the Elastic Services Controller to control OpenStack, 
or v, uh, Sphere or Hyper-V or Amazon Web Services or Docker or Vagrant or any number of virtualization layers. <clears throat> we also have a CPE and a plug and play server at the orchestration layer. And then we have either OVS or a virtual topology forward, uh, a virtualized topology forwarding engine, which provides an open uh, virtual switching environment. And then we have these virtual network functions, a CPE in the remote end. The CPE automatically discovers uh, the network. It discovers its uh, call home agent uh, and where the call home server is. It dynamically calls home, retrieves its configuration, and then onboards its configuration from the orchestrator. The orchestrator also, uh, also spins up uh, the network devices and network functions. So why don't I do this? Why don't we take some time uh, to do a demonstration to show you how this works? Uh, so let me uh, give you an example here. Oh, well, there you go, PowerPoint, just, it, just in the nick of time, it crashed. I wonder why. Can everybody see that? I'll make it a little bit bigger, uh, text-wise. So here we have, if you remember in the previous picture, we had a portal on top of the network services orchestrator. And the portal is the interface into the system from a provisioning perspective. I want to be able to provision a service. And this one's called Extranet VPN. So this is actually running you know, on a server we have in San Jose. Uh, so if I log in here, what I see is a welcome page. And it's a multi-tenant operational portal in this case. I'll select one of the customers. In this case, I'll create a new one. I'll call it uh, you know, CLUS and submit. And then I see that I, I, I'm given some options. Now, if I'm TWI Bank, I have operations in four theaters around the world. And I want to be able to provide my customers the ability to attach uh, across a VPN connection and then access some type of service inside of this uh, location from you know, somewhere in the region. And this could be for a regular, regulatory reasons, uh, performance reasons. Of course, you don't want to you know, be in China attaching to a, you know, a site in Europe. Obviously, you want to do something that's a little bit closer. So let's assume for the you know, sake of argument, we're here in the United States. And by the way, I should go back real quickly and show you this is all driven from a catalog. So these, the services themselves, the components of the services that comprise these service bundles come from a catalog. So if you have something in your business catalog that, you know, some kind of service that you'd want to offer, like a, you know, access to an ERP database or some kind of manufacturing tool chain or whatever it is, then you would provide that through the catalog. Excuse me, and then the orchestration system would be responsible in part for activating the, the, that function. So if there's an API, and let's say it is a manufacturing tool chain, and there's an API on top of it that activates the tool chain on behalf of the customer, then the orchestration system would have to write some, you'd have to write some code to, to activate that function. We write this code in Yang, we model it in Yang at least, and then we communicate with these functions through a variety of different methods. We can communicate via REST, via uh, NetConf, via CLI, uh, via any number of different uh, transport protocols. So I'll select the US uh, site. Now, maybe I have more than one site that I want to connect with. So I'll connect, in this case, I'll just put one for the sake of argument. And I have a CPE, a Cisco 881, sitting over there where it says cloud. So I'm going to use that guy. And let's say that is 100 meg of uh, bandwidth. And this is a bank. So we have um, an, you know, a sort of a fictitious service here, a market data use, use, users uh, for licensing. So I could change the, the size of this, which would potentially change the amount of bandwidth that gets provisioned. In fact, if I keep it at medium and I look at the re recommended bandwidth, it actually recommends 250 meg. So it goes to the next tier. If I you know, go back, for example, and I change it to low, it recommends 100 meg. So we, we have a recommendation engine here. We can, you can do all sorts of algorithms, however you'd really want to make this happen. So I'll go on and continue with here with uh, 100 meg of bandwidth. And then I'll select 20 SSL VPN users. Maybe you want you know, people not only to be able to connect across the IPsec tunnel, but you want to be able to connect you know, across an AnyConnect VPN. So this gives you remote access from, you know, from a mobile site or from a mobile device as well as you know, from the office itself. We also provide for redundancy. So if you need to have a primary and a backup uh, you know, virtual function, uh, two IPsec tunnels to two different uh, cloud services routers to two different ASA firewalls, we could provide that. <clears throat> now this is where it gets interesting. 
in the service provider context, typically the service provider would sell the, the router. And in, in Cisco's case, we do. So when, it, when our partners want to connect with us, we say, here's how you do it. You need an ISR, some class of router, 881 or a 1700, and here's the cost and we'll ship it to you. And then we can orchestrate the provisioning. The same applies to a service provider, like a, you know, if it's Comcast or Verizon or whatever, they're going to ship you the device. But in an enterprise context, it's possible that we don't want to ship the device, you already have one. I already have a Cisco router that I'm going to use for my connection to you, TWI Bank, so I can skip the device ordering process altogether. <clears throat> I'll bring my own device. So we've now expanded the capability of a cloud VPN service to include extranet VPNs in an enterprise context without changing much at all. We added a button and we added a small bit of Yang code to change the device model and the service model, and that's it. So this is the key thing about this, is that it's an adaptable service. Earlier on, I mentioned that it's really critical to be able to, uh, to do things more in an agile way. If you think about the power of SDN and the power of virtualization and orchestration and what they bring to the services that are available today, the key, the key benefit is agility, to be able to get services on quickly. Virtualization reduces the risk and reduces the cost. This model-driven approach reduces the time to deploy. And that also changes the time to revenue or the time to service activation. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and purchase the service. But before I do, I want to show you that this is uh, not Memorex here. So I have a system over here. And I will access this orchestration system. And I'm going, to, I'm going to take a look at some of the log files in the background so we can see just exactly what's going to happen. And then I'll go back here. Actually, let me, let me switch over to here first and make sure that we're good. And this, by the way, is the CPE itself. Now, I pulled the, the cable out uh, from, the, uh, from the system because I, I had to move over here. I don't have a console cable that long. But we'll be able to orchestrate the service and get online as soon as we can. Make sure that it's working. All right. Okay, so I have a test vir vir virtual topology here. All right. Plus purchase. All right. So you just saw that. See, it says commit performed by admin via SSH using NetConf, and in the background, we're going to start activating the service. So the service has been successfully created. I'll go to the, my devices. I selected one device. And it's something I'm bringing myself. So I can give it a, a device serial number. This is for authentication purposes. In this case, I won't do much. And I'll register it. I'll just give it a dummy serial number. And now it allows me to configure the device. So what I want to do, because I'm bringing my own device, I have to tell TWI Bank what IP addresses I'm going to use for my crypto session. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this device and put in, it says needs input here. I'll give it a name. We'll just call it uh, Clus1. And then the LAN address I'll put in here. And the WAN address, I'm just going to make this up because I, you know, obviously we don't really have one uh, in, 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 attached to me right now. But I'll just put an IP address in here. And I'll give it a location. And we are here in San Diego. Convention Center. If I could spell, it would help. And uh, we have Mapbox integration, so when I do this, it'll do a go ahead and search the internet for you know, something that matches this. It should, if I'm, I'm I should be connected here. Give it a second. And it, 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 here, I'll take this guy here. Right here is good. So we're somewhere over here. I'll click Finish. And now it's updating the device. It's telling the orchestration system, here's the IP address of the LAN. Here's the IP address of the WAN. So go ahead and, and start to provision the back end, the virtual functions that are in the cloud, so that, that we can build this, uh, this, orca, this, uh, this IPsec tunnel. So now, at this point, I have to go and it's going to take about seven or eight minutes for these virtual functions to come online, in which case we'll run out of time. Uh, but the idea should be clear. Very simply, we're able to activate through a, a self-service, easy to use self-service portal, network functions in the cloud, firewall, uh, IPsec tunnel cap uh, capability, uh, and, and at the same time, onboard a remote device 
without anybody touching a CLI, logging into a router, uh, going into the OpenStack Horizon dashboard and spinning up a, a bunch of uh, compute engines. It's all automated through this orchestration system. Let's see where we are right now and see what's happening um, uh, inside the, the service here. So we So you can see here, I created one called Clus S. Uh, this is the name of the virtual topology. And it says that the virtual machine is alive.